Thank you. So I just want to quickly um, you know, introduce our mentors that are speaking to get today. Again, this is our Navigating an Online Coronavirus Landscape uh, College Social Life webinar. So first we have Brylin Rakes, who is one of our mentors, and she's also going to be our moderator today. Uh, she grew up in the small town of Visalia, California, and found her passion for dance performance at the age of eight. For 14 years, Brylin trained and performed in various dance styles, including classical ballet, contemporary, and jazz. She was honored to be the at and Spotlight Performer on ABC's Dancing with the Stars as she performed alongside Emmy-nominated dancer and choreographer Derek Huff. Brylin earned a BFA in dance from the Eileen Fordham BFA program and a BA in communications and media studies from Fordham University. Brylin currently resides in Palo Alto, California where she is interning with Vista Center for the Blind and Visually Impaired in addition to pursuing a certificate in business administration from Foothill College. Also with us today is Maureen Hayden, another mentor. Maureen has a BS in marine biology from the University of Rhode Island, an MS in biology from Walla Walla University, and is currently pursuing a PhD in marine biology from Texas A&M. She was born with retinopathy, prematurity, and has no vision in her right eye and is legally blind in her left eye. And last but not least, we have Rashad Jones, another mentor. He is a native of Columbus, Georgia, where he currently resides and is the second oldest of four siblings. As a self-proclaimed people person, Rashad can often be found enjoying a nice conversation with close friends and family members or relaxing in the comfort of his home. He enjoys attending church where he serves as minister of music, traveling, interacting with people and helping others whenever possible. For Learning Ally, in addition to mentoring students, Rashad also co-hosts our podcast, College Knowledge. And I'm going to swing it back to Abigail to um, kick off our polls. Great. So like I said just a bit ago, we wanted to get an idea of where people are living and going to school. So I'm going to push this poll out. We'll give it a couple of minutes for everybody to um, reply. And just in case uh, to be helpful, the questions are, are you living in a dorm or somewhere off campus? And how, where are you accessing your classroom this semester? In person, online, a mixture of in person and online. Um, you're taking a break from school or maybe you're not a student. These questions don't apply. You can check NA. I'll give it one more minute for folks to reply. About 30 more seconds. All right, and Katie, can you access our responses today? Yes. So it appears that of um, for the question, are you living in a dorm or somewhere off campus? Uh, four people have said off campus. No one is living in a dorm right now. Um, so that's good for us to know as we work through and talk through what we have to, to talk about. Um, and for where are you accessing a classroom? We have 50% of people saying online. 25% uh, is a mix of in-person and online. And 25% is taking a break from school. So it seems like we have a, a pretty good mix as far as where people are, are accessing the classrooms and uh, you know how they're going about that. Um, so with that, um, I'm gonna go ahead and end the poll and uh, go ahead and, and pass it over to Brylin. We can dig into this. All right, hello everybody. Um, so we'll just jump into our first question. So uh, our Learning Ally curriculum talks about something called extracurricular 
uh, theory. Can one of our panelists um, talk about a little bit about what that is? Sure, I'd be happy to. This is Rashad. Um, so the extracurricular theory has to do with the types of activities you engage in or the organizations or clubs that you decide to participate in. So this basically says that if you want to do something, join an extracurricular, that you do something that is related to your major or um, field of study, maybe one activity that, you know, is geared towards that. So if you're a music major, perhaps join something that um, is music related or um, joining something that is non-related to your major um, or just something that you like to do for fun. Um, and so that's basically a very rough uh, summation of what that theory states. Nice, yeah, cool. Um, and then our next question is, what are some challenges that students who have low vision or are blind, uh, what are some challenges they're facing when meeting people either physically distanced or virtually? Um, Maureen, I think you had a good answer to this. Yeah, hi, Brylin, this is Maureen. Um, so for me, I, I, I am low vision. Uh, so in particular, I think, first of all, let's go to meeting peers uh, in the classroom. So one thing that I struggle with is recognizing my friend. Recognize me first before I recognize them. Um, so a lot of the times I usually will tell them up front, you know, if you're introducing yourself, could you please when I'm getting to know you, like say your name and where we met. So like, oh, hi, this is Emily from ecology class and we're supposed to be working on our PowerPoint together rather than just um, saying hello, because I think um, nonverbal communicators are just so natural, um, but I really ask for that extra verbal communication when meeting people initially. The other thing I've run into um, with this kind of, I'm one of the mixed curricula people. So I do some classes online, some in person is um, meeting students in person for the first time versus just seeing them as like a name and a voice on a screen um, is very like, it's exciting at first, but it's also a little bit disorienting. Um, and I've had people come up to me cause I can't see the video on Zoom really. And so they've come up to me and be like, oh, you're in my class. And I'm like, I am. And they're like, yeah, we're in the same Zoom lecture. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I, I only know you as like a voice and a name on a screen, but hi, it's nice to meet you in person. So I think in yeah. those situations, you know, um, diffusing it with humor. And then I know for me asking for that extra like verbal clarification when people come to meet and greet, especially when I'm making new friends is really important. Yeah, because all those little boxes on Zoom are really small. Mm -hmm. And the bigger the course is, the more boxes are on there. And yeah, I wouldn't be able to unless I got like an inch away from the screen, be able to really <laughs> capture what everyone looked like. So yeah, I totally get that. And if you have str like supposed strangers coming up to you can definitely be a little bit disorienting, but um, we are being exposed to a lot more people online. So mm -hmm. just good thing to be aware of. Um, Especially with the masks, if people are out in public. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a whole oh, other I'm component. <laughs> I've mistaken friends a couple times. People have mistaken me for their friend. So it's just, it's going around everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And it's also like, this is just a side thing. It's so much harder to hear. So, and I know that I depend on my hearing a lot because, you know, of my lack of vision. So with the masks on top of that it, and those um, also, what are those called? Those plexiglass things. I just, it's just another layer where it's like everything's muffled and it's really hard to communicate. So <laughs> kudos to all of us for dealing with it. Um, mm. But to move along, uh, what are some strategies for meeting new classmates or friends if a student has returned to campus and has a physically distanced experience? So just as like really practical, what I would say, because everything 
is outside. It's just something I thought of is that we're out going to be outdoors a lot more. And so just a strategy that I thought of to kind of get rid of glare and to make like your life easier is like find a good hat because there's going to be a lot of social activities and opportunities to socialize, but they're going to be outside most likely. So you just want to be prepared for, for those things and kind of think ahead and, and realize that, you know, you're going to have to be outside. And, and if you're light sensitive, like I am, you know, you know, be prepared for that. So that's kind of my, my thing. And if you're at your university, take advantage to use it as an opportunity for some school pride. <laughs> yes, for <laughs> sure. Um, I would also say when it comes to strategies for meeting new classmates and friends, I know for me, I kind of have a personal limit when it comes to group sizes. Um, no more than 10. And I know sometimes with outdoor events, uh, that capacity can get a bit larger. Um, but I think it's important when doing this um, to keep in mind like your own definition of what you're comfortable with when it comes to meeting friends, um, whether it's that you prefer one-on-one -on -one settings or you're okay with small groups, just um, be aware of like what environmental settings and um, with how many people you feel safe and comfortable. Totally. Yeah. I, I said yes to a couple things or I've maybe reached out to like someone wanting to do something. And then the day comes and I'm like, wait, like you start to think about the virus and the implications and you're like, oh, maybe I should cancel. So really think hard, bef like if you before, cause I know I've gotten stuck where I had to like cancel and I don't like to cancel last minute, but really just, yeah, define how, like how you want to be social. And if you're really comfortable, um, so that you don't have to like cancel on people multiple times like I have. It's it's not fun. Um, so uh, moving on, what are some fun activities students can participate in if they are on campus? So I would say one place to start looking at least um, for activities is virtual advertising and marketing. So follow your school on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Um, like there's usually like a fine arts department or uh, different, different social groups um, where you can like figure out all the different student organizations that are being offered. So um, don't be afraid to like look in your email too. Sometimes there are like student listservs and announcements will go out. So at least that's a good place to start um, mm -hmm. looking for opportunities. Yeah, I know there's social media pages, um, Facebook. Um, I know a lot of people still um, use that and Instagram just, or, you know, Twitter, whatever their social media niche is, you know, going there is usually a good place to find the latest updates where the website may or may not be updated, but mm -hmm. people's uh, or organizations, social media pages usually are. That's yeah, and if, yeah, oh. that's really good. Um, also like this isn't obviously on campus, but I go to my local YMCA and everything's outdoors and the machines are all spread out. And I've just really enjoyed you know, exercise as an outlet during this time. It's a really healthy thing. And if it's something you've never tried, you could totally look into it. And um, even the gym at your, just like speaking up about, you know, you know, getting a tour of the gym on your campus. Um, and I know Maureen, you mentioned something about like personal training, um, mm. like a good discount for that maybe. Yeah. Uh, so because of COVID. Yeah, some universities, because of the mixed like virtual and in-person routine for online classes, even like online group fitness classes, uh, some universities offer student discounts when it comes to personal training and uh, fitness classes. So you might want to ask your, your school or your local um, like student recreation center uh, what opportunities are available to you. And the reason I would suggest a personal trainer is just I'm not comfortable with group fitness classes yet. Um, so like having a one-on-one -on -one environment where you're consistently seeing the same person over and over again. So you can kind of track the people you've been in contact with might be of interest to some people. Totally. And uh, word of mouth is always well, one of my first go-tos for anything. I just ask friends, um, you know, who I speak with on a regular basis, hey, what are you doing? Um, 
you know, what kind of things are you involved in and how is that working out? Especially during these times, it's just for me personally, it's just really daunting to think about how all of these things are even taking place. So if I were still in school, I would certainly rely on my friends to figure out what kind of things to get involved in and how they're doing it. Yeah, exactly. Um, that's a good kind of transition. Um, finding social activities online because yeah, there, there's some, a lot of them are going to be outside, but you know, there's going to be, there's a lot of new opportunities online. So do you guys have any like specific things that students can get involved in um, like online? I know at Texas A&M University, um, a lot of the student organizations cannot meet in person right now due to room capacity restrictions. So they're transferring to online meetings, which you can still get involved in. Um, and then uh, even some student organizations operate entirely online now, um, for example, like student government. Um, and then uh, again, like depending on whether or not that student organization decides to do like a social um, and that may not be online, but I feel like a lot of student organizations in this time are trying to maintain a presence, uh, even if it is just having like weekly or bi-weekly meetings uh, in a virtual format. Mm -hmm. and there are, Got we've it. talked uh, during this conversation about fitness and things like that, but I think it's really important that we do so because, you know, your, your mental health, your physical health, all of these things are very important to keep up during this time especially and so it's really interesting because you can maybe if if you're at home or indoors a lot more often can uh, take this time to really explore those types of um, options and so um, what I've done is I've gotten together with a group of friends who I mainly met online through Facebook but we have done lots of different things together so we have like uh, game nights and things like that. And um, even a smaller group of that, there's a, um, a Bible study group that I'm a part of as well. But it's all about reaching out and connecting and, and maintaining those connections because it can be really daunting to um, go from being in person with everything and being so close with everyone and then having to figure out ways to do that remotely or in person, but with all of these guidelines and things like that. Um, so it's really a lot to consider, but it's worth it, I think, um, to, to maintain your sanity and your happiness to uh, explore all of these different options. Mm -hmm. I've even Definitely. seen for our students, like pop-up yoga on the quad or like outdoor activities where you can maintain spacing between individuals and they'll have like the yoga mat set out in like eight foot by eight foot grids with like the instructor in the front um and so I think people are really trying to make a move to try to maintain the social aspect of your your college career because as much as it is about academics it's also about building friendships and, mm -hmm. and learning new things and um I think staying social is like so important you know to your well-being yeah, like how can students, you know, maintain meaningful, meaningful connections uh, during this time? Like, that's a really big thing that we all need to make sure we're doing. And um, do you guys have anything to say about, about that? Like, how do we keep those connections up? It can be really isolating during this time. Yeah, I would just say, uh, again, as with most of this stuff, it's making those connections online. So making use of platforms like this one, like Zoom for instance, uh, and, and others, but really these types of platforms where you can have a large number of people on at one time. Um, my family and I are used to having annual family reunions. And so obviously that could not happen this time, but prior to that we had, um, we celebrated one of our, one of my um, distant cousins birthdays and even though we were all in different places, I would not lie to you, it's amazing, the same energy. It was almost like being there in person because it was like, oh, this person just joined. And it was just, it was really an amazing thing to share, even virtually. So I wouldn't underestimate those types of connections. Yeah, I completely agree. Like it's a, com there's a, a new world happening where we can experience these connections online and just kind of like leaning into that and embracing that and 
not being like, oh, like I have to log on and, you know, this is strange, kind of just like leaning into the unfamiliar unfamiliarity of it. Um, mm -hmm. I know that we get really get wrapped up into our remote, you know, routines and just adding on another, you know, Zoom meeting that's, you know, for social reasons doesn't seem like it's necessarily something you want to do all the time, but I've never regretted like logging on and hanging out with family. And it's definitely a time where we can refresh and, and connect. And although it's online, it's, you know, everybody, everyone has to do it. And it's just something that we need to do. And I've always felt really great afterwards. Um, and I think something just, yeah. to, to keep in mind is like when you're connecting with friends, um, it doesn't have to be as formal in a setting where we are right now, like sitting prominently. <laughs> Um, I've been on Zoom calls with friends and like we spent probably 15 minutes just like she spent, uh, like she moved into a new apartment. So she gave me like a Zoom tour of like her new apartment or another friend uh, like went to go let her dog outside and her dog was being super goofy. So she like turned her camera around and was like verbally describing to me like the silly things that her Labrador dog was doing in the yard. Um, so I don't think like every Zoom meeting also has to be as formal as it is like in an academic setting. So you can have a little bit of fun and get uh, creative and be a little more relaxed, especially when connecting with uh, friends and family. And I think, Brylan, you mentioned this when we were talking the other day, now is a really good time to take an opportunity to reach out to people you may not have reached out to in a while, or maybe do like a high school class reunion or like a high school marching band reunion or like um, mm -hmm. just, you know, reach out to groups of people you haven't talked to in a while, and you'll be surprised uh, how long the Zoom sessions will go for sometimes. <laughs> and that people are really receptive during this time, like we're all kind of in the same boat, we're figuring out how to do it, so um, don't hesitate to reach out. Absolutely. And last thing, um, what are some, like, actual fun things that you guys have that you guys do online that I've always wanted to try. Like, uh, I know Maureen, you mentioned like doing a book club and how that has been. So maybe we could talk about some like tangible fun things that maybe we should all try uh, to be social online. Um, yeah, Brylin, I'll definitely start off with the book club. And that's been really fun because um, I'm in a like a Bible study with a bunch of uh, graduate women who are also scientists, but then tangentially, we're reading a book called like my badass book of saints which like the title just kind of intrigued all of us and so we'll get on the meeting and usually the first half hour there's about like eight of us and we'll just spend the first half hour catching up with everyone um there's usually like a little intro question like what's your favorite flower or do highs and lows of the week um something like that just to kind of check in with everybody and then the book actually has like discussion questions in it uh, so we'll talk about those. Um, there are other book clubs where maybe somebody's already made discussion questions online for you to follow. Um, but it's been a great way to supplement my time other than just watching Netflix or Hulu. And it's actually been really good because I'm rediscovering how much I, I enjoy audiobooks and reading again. Oh, yeah, I need to I need to get away from Netflix. It's I'm I feel like everyone at least during the pandemic has gone through the the binge watching phase and I'm back in it guys I'm I'm back it's <laughs> it's bad um but yeah like a book club sounds so fun and I really want I haven't wanted I haven't tried this yet but I've seen on social media that people are doing like they're cooking together so someone has a recipe on either end and they're like both doing it simultaneously they're like making a recipe um and that sounds pretty fun Another yeah. thing is like you during the holidays, kind of doing festive things. I'm so excited the holidays are approaching, like pumpkin carving together. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's kind of crazy to think about, but I mean, um, it's almost the same as if you were doing it in person, but just like being online, but like doing a fun activity. Uh, there, that was like a fun one. Um, and when Christmas comes along, you can be creative with the things that you you do on there. Uh, my niece had a birthday party where they like did a Zoom uh, pottery painting. It was so cute. She turned 11 and I thought that was really creative of my sister to think of that um, for my niece. But yeah, what about Rashad? Did you have, you have something that you do, right? Uh, yeah. With, with your... I, I was just going to say, 
a group of friends of mine and myself, we practically, especially a couple months ago when I wasn't working um, as much and definitely wasn't going out working. I'm since gone back into the office, but back in the day, <laughs> um, <laughs> we basically lived on Facebook Messenger. Really, I mean, we just talked. We had calls almost every day uh, for several hours a day. So that really helped us out. We each have said we don't know what we would have done and what our lives were like before this because it's just been an all-consuming uh, pandemic, really, and, 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 and reordering of the way that we've had to do things as a culture and as, as a world. So maintaining those types of connections, again, is so important. And then one thing that we have done... Um, especially during that time was we always had a game night on Friday night. So that was something you could look forward to. You knew it was coming. We had like um, sometimes the guys versus the girls. So it'd be like eight or 10 of us uh, at one point all participating, playing like Family Feud or a game called Shout Rages or five and seven where you have to come up with five different things to answer the question in seven seconds. So really things that would push you, but we're, so much fun and so those types of things are really fun and then my family I've got a group of cousins who we've had a couple of game nights not as many but we've done that and we've just gotten on just to chat and I was making cookies one night and it took me forever and they're like you're not done with those cookies yet and it was because I was talking to them yeah because you're like no because I'm talking to you <laughs> and running a mixer and I, it you know it makes a lot of noise and yeah. so anyway but the camaraderie is so important and having something like a like a bible study like a couple of us mentioned or like whatever it is that you do like a book club or like a game night that you have to look forward to every week really makes the time go by and it really fills your life so I think they're yeah, always stru structuring in social activities seems like should be like last on your list. I know for me, like on the, on a daily basis, it's, it's not a priority and, um, but it really does bring a lot of joy into my life. So I think we can all do better in like structuring these, these social things and trying to think outside the box and like putting in a little of that extra effort, um, because it really is worth it. Um, like in the long run to just, try to like withstand this pandemic because it's it has not gone away as fast as we initially thought and it's it's not going to so we really have to figure out how to sustain ourselves and and be healthy so especially um if you're in college um which I'm, i know some of you are but it's so important the academics are important but equally as important are the experiences and so finding the ways to make that happen is just paramount really can't say enough about it i yeah. second Rashad yeah <laughs> you you come away with some good stories hopefully at the end of your your undergrad from the social activities that that's what makes the really fun stories that you'll remember for years to come not necessarily what test you took or what homework assignment you completed but the friends you made and the experiences that you had yep. Yep. remembering it won't last forever it's going to be here for a while perhaps but it won't be here forever so just finding a way to get through it until we get through it I agree with you guys. I think that's a good place to to wrap it up and maybe move to questions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thank you guys for this. Has been fun to just listen in on on your conversation. I want to <laughs> remind everybody if you have a question, um, you can raise your hand and unmute your. We'll call on you to unmute. Um, raising your hand is the quick key on a PC is Alt Y. Option Y on a Mac um, or star nine if you're calling in from the phone. Um, you're also welcome to type it in into the chat box and, um, and we'll, we'll read it out. Um, while people are formulating their questions, I know one other thing we talked about when we were prepping was um, giving back. And um, you talked about the student government part, which I think is great, Maureen. Um, did you guys have other thoughts on ways that students can still get involved with like the blindness community or maybe a club on campus if they need a fundraise? Like what are some thoughts on doing those things while physically distancing? Uh, for the blind community, I would just say if you want to reach out and find other or, or you know, other individuals who are blind or groups who are blind, Facebook I live on. So that's going to be my default. But going on Facebook and typing in 
blind, whatever it is. There are so many groups and I don't necessarily want to endorse one over the other. So mm -hmm. blind cooks or blind, whatever it is. Um, blind scientists, blind athletes, blind scholars. Blind musicians. Blind musicians, yeah. Um, uh, one big one is blind pen pals, blind lounge, just there are so many, life without sight. Anything that relates to sight or blind, um, you do some searches and, um, you know, certainly they'll come up or you guys could contact us, I, I imagine, um, through our email and we could point you in the right direction. Yeah, course, definitely. Students can, um, we, you know, if you have interest in connecting with a mentor like Maureen or Brylin or Rashad, um, you can reach out to uh, CSP at learningally.org. We can get you the form to sign up for a mentor. We also do weekly meetups and um, those happen again on Zoom. Uh, Tuesdays, they're at 6.15 p.m. Eastern and on Fridays, they're at 2 p.m. Eastern. And it's just a two hour time block where our mentors and other students um, connect and socialize. Um, I know Maureen and Rashad have been on them. Often topics range from things like food and technology, <laughs> troubleshooting inaccessible, uh, various inaccessible software. So it's a great bunch of folks with from all over the country. Um, so those are some other ways you can plug in with, with our Learning Ally College Success Program. Mm -hmm. Um, and then like the, the and blindness, I also, sorry. Oh, go ahead, Risha. Just, I was just going to say the blindness organization is like the National Federation of the Blind or the American Council for the Blind. They often have um, online tutorials and online meetups for different topics. So mm -hmm. getting plugged in and connected with those entities is a very good idea. They've held virtual conventions and that was amazing even being socially distanced and, and virtual, yet having that same camaraderie again, you might be surprised at what you find out, so. Yeah, every every organization um, is doing some kind of conference or webinar. Um, so just a simple Google search will, it's, it's, it's overwhelming. So I would pick pick one thing and like kind of dive in and, and attend a conference or whatever, but everything is there's a virtual form of of everything so um lot there's lots of content to be engaged with and, and things to be doing online yeah absolutely and i think uh brylin you said it really well earlier in that sometimes we might you know think that an online experience isn't going to be it's certainly not going to be what we expected of events before um but I think you either said it today or when we were prepping for this that you've never regretted getting on Zoom to connect with your family or hanging out with friends. Um, and although the Zoom fatigue or whatever type of conferencing you students might be accessing for school, that is certainly a real thing. Um, I just want to emphasize that that uh, reflection you had, Brylin, of never regretting connecting with other people. Um, even if you've been on your computer all day, it's still different. And um, I think we should work with what, what we have right now. So if that's Zoom or even just a massive conference call um, or, or you just know, three FaceTiming your, your sister. Friend. Yeah, like I have sisters yeah. and I'm, um, they've all gotten puppies in, during the pandemic. I'm like, I'm so mm -hmm. jealous of you guys and your puppies. Like this one has this puppy and this one has a golden doodle. And I get to like see all the puppies on FaceTime. That's kind of what I do. And I'm always on, I'm on FaceTime every day with one of my family members. And it's just really fun. And you kind of learn how to multitask too. Like I put the the phone against like the stove and I try to cook and I'm like chopping. And my mom is actually doing similar tasks. Like, and so it's kind of, you know, it feels, it honestly feels real. So like we're in person. Me this summer in doing puzzles, my parents would FaceTime me every day and be like, did you make progress on your puzzle? <laughs> <laughs> and then usually the cat would jump on the coffee table and like try to lay on top of said puzzle. So, <laughs> but it made for a good conversation piece every day. They wanted to see the progress of the puzzle, whatever puzzle I was working on. 
I I did not do, jump on the puzzle wagon. I don't like puzzles. They are just, they are, I just infuriating. Like no, I'm not gonna stare at this little piece of cardboard for another minute. Like, but I'm a lot. Of my my family loved the puzzle thing, and I I couldn't. But um, they're impressive when they're finished. I'll say that. You know, Brian, I think adopting a dog definitely uh, is more fun than puzzles. So. <laughs> yes, I. They have made me want a dog so badly. Um, mm -hmm. I want. I want a Bernie Doodle. It's like a half poodle and a half Bernice Mountain dog. Oh my gosh, they're adorable. They are so cute. Oh, well, I've been day, day, daydreaming about that. Yeah, that's cool. Something that I've really enjoyed yeah. doing is um, being in the kitchen, like I said earlier. Um, and I have a massive sweet tooth at times, um, a legendary in some parts. So, um, what I've done is I've gotten in the kitchen and made cookies from scratch. I love making things from scratch. And so I get my mixer um, and I've been making cookies and seeing them on Facebook and getting a lot of great responses. Haven't done it in the past couple of months, but that's something that I have done and we'll do again soon. So it's really a lot of fun to, to actually get better at what I'm doing and trying, you know, slightly different recipes and getting the feedback from everyone. So that's something that has been great. And delicious, I might add. <laughs> Yeah, we sure? had um, just a comment in the chat. Heather had asked um, how she can find out more about our meetups. So for any students, these the meetups are specifically for students. Um, so if you're if you're a student in college or you're about to be in college, um, just email us csp at learning. Um, we share out the joining details. We share out the joining details an hour before and then at the time of the event. So. Um, once you're on our mailing list, you'll get them every Tuesday and Friday. And that's, again, that's CSP at learningally.org. I think the second half of yours got cut out, um, Abigail. So thank you, Rashad. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, one other thing, while we're still all together, we'll probably wrap up if we don't have too many questions here shortly, but I also want to remind students that our national Achievement Awards are um, an annual scholarship that Learning Ally provides to college students who are in their senior year um, or mat working towards their master's or PhD. We are taking applications now for the award to be provided next year. And the deadline is November 30th. So um, definitely uh, I will find the URL and paste it in the chat. You can also just search for Learning Ally NAA um, and it should come up. Um, but it's a wonderful scholarship and we'd love to have a broader pool of applicants uh, to apply. One more thing I just thought about um, as it relates to making connections and finding out about different things that may be going on either virtually or in person, your local center for independent living, there's, uh, there are several in every state. So looking up CIL, Center for Independent Living, and you can find one that serves your area and different resources for events. Excellent. Well, I think we have um, exhausted all of our wisdom on the topic. Hopefully <laughs> we can all <laughs> provide a lot more insight. Um, we're certainly wishing all of you students and professionals working with students that you continue to stay safe and be well. Um, and I'm going to just pass it off to Katie for any last thoughts before we wrap up. Yeah, just thank you all for attending. And I would just say be on the lookout for an email from us in the coming weeks for our next webinar. Uh, just to wrap up this series, it's going to be um, all more on the professional side of it and how to handle professional situations and, uh, you know, how to kind of go about, uh, you know, 
interviews and, and jobs and those types of things during a pandemic. Uh, so more information, including registration information, will be coming out on that in the, in the coming weeks. So just be on the lookout. We will also be sending out a recording of this webinar in the coming days. Um, so you all will be receiving that as well. Uh, so again, thank you all for attending and um, have a great night.